And welcome to a nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We're reaching you live from Abuja. I am Ronke Kolawole. Politicians have been urged to play by the rules to guarantee the sustenance of democracy in Nigeria. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria say it is not just about seeking power, but politicians must have the resolve to serve and impart the populace for good. Lydia Sampson has details. The guests noted that some politicians exhibit extreme behavior and tendencies in their quest for power as witnessed during the 2019 general elections. They described the trend as a mixed bag that cannot be totally blamed only on the political class as they are products of the society. They however condemned in strong terms the resort to money politics and undue manipulation of voters with religious and ethnic sentiments in a bid to win election at all costs. There are two sides to every issue. Where you have a model that people appreciate that you are a good representative, you are able to actually defend their cause, you are able to present their problems in parliament, and you are able to actually pursue course of action that will bring about change in your community. Where that is appreciated, then good politics is happening. The people who manage elections, for example, uh, uh, the INEC, uh, they should be seen to be very transparent. If you picked a university professor who has kicked vehemently against the idea of uh, exam malpractice, but you have been told that he is the one that has changed result sheets and that he, he has allegedly been part of a scam, you begin to wonder, where are we, are we actually maturing or are we going backward? So once there is a credible election and the process is good one, that there will be no tribunal, the less issues of tribunal cases, and that will be peace. There was advocacy for the political class to do away with the winner-take-it-all mentality. I think we must think of moderating our politics by changing our electoral system a little, away from a very competitive system to one that is accommodative of losers. You know, and I'm talking about what Justice Ways Committee said about the need for this country to uh, try some element of proportional representation. One of the major issues I think that bedeviled the Nigerian political scenery these days is uh, the seeming uh, focus by the political elite to see the struggle for uh, control of power or access to power in order to be able to uh, fulfill certain personal aspirations uh, against, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, service to, to the people, service to the community. Until the people themselves demand that this kind of over expenditure of bloated expenses and recurrent expenses we see in the budget that goes to the upper class is dispersed in such a way that it benefits the entire society, we're not likely to get good governance. They are optimistic that with more voter education and national orientation, the political class and indeed Nigeria at large will get it right. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Meanwhile, concern is mounting in Kano State over a late vote buying ahead of the governorship rerun election scheduled for this Saturday. This ugly trend is said to be a threat to free, fair, and credible conduct of the exercise. In this report, Abdullahi Mustafa takes a look at the implication of the alleged vote buying in effort to nip the problem in the bud. Gama is one of the 11 wards in Nasara local government area of Kano State. It occupies an important position on the political map of Kano State, being the second largest ward in the most populous local government area in the state. 
Ibrahim Abdul Hamid Namudubi is one of the 42,000 registered voters in Gama Ward and is hopeful of participating in the March 23 supplementary governorship election in Kano State. He is, however, concerned with the resurgence of another problem that, if left unchecked, could disenfranchise many eligible voters. I personally witnessed some two women and one boy last two days were buying this uh, PBC and the police apprehended them. So I think one of the effects is, is such that the people will be denied their own voting right, which is one of the major principles of elections and of democracy itself. Already five suspects are in the police net and many permanent voter cards recovered. We are going to investigate the route. Who are those behind all these things? And that one will serve as a deterrent. Both parties taking part in the supplementary elections disown the vote buyers. There was a clear directive by the governor that uh, we should follow due process to ensure that uh, we win this re-election. We are not part of it and we dislike it. We, we condemn it in totality because it's unconstitutional and it's against the Electoral Act. These encouraging remarks and swift response of the police renewed the hope of the likes of Ibrahim Abdul Hamid Namadoubi that the supplementary election will not only be free and fair but also peaceful. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. Meanwhile, Kano leaders of third under the auspices of Concerned Citizens Initiative have urged political parties to avoid overheating the political atmosphere in the state ahead of the governorship run election. They also demand for a healthy electionary campaigns and urge the people to shun acts capable of destroying the future of youths in the state. Chairman of the initiative, Bashir Othman Tufa, surveys why addressing journalists ahead of the rerun governorship election in Kano. Muhammad Rabi Ali reports. Following the March 9th governorship and state assembly elections, as well as declaration of governorship result inconclusive, the Kano Concerned Citizens Initiative has been intervening positively to ensure peaceful atmosphere in the state. This meeting is aimed at informing other stakeholders on the need to give peace a chance and to forestall unnecessary tension or violence that might arise during the rerun election. It is also very necessary to plead with all the arms of our security architecture to remain alert and vigilant from now until the formal declaration of the rerun elections and after. Sufficient personnel must be detailed and posted to each of the polling stations and local governments of the state that make up all the votes that were cancelled by INEC. The initiative pleaded with the electoral umpire to live up to expectation by providing election materials on time in all the affected polling units. CCI also believes that results of the election outcomes must be publicly announced without delay. The onus is on INEC to deliver a foolproof election. Any act of permission or omission would be squarely placed on its shoulders. Cannot Concerned Citizens Initiative therefore urge youth in the state not to be used by political parties to trigger violence before, during and after the rerun election. Muhammad Rabi Ali, NG News. In the meantime, Bauchi State Chapter of the All Progressive Congress APC has rejected the report of a fact-finding committee on the disruption of coalition process at Tafawa Balewa local government area of the state. State Chairman of the party, Uba Ahmedana, during a press conference in Bauchi said the report which led to reversal of the earlier position of INEC on the Island is unacceptable. Abbas Mekano reports. Alaji Uba Ahmed Nana said the committee denied fair hearing to APC as a political party whose agents were not invited during hearing of the fact leading to the cancellation of the results of Tafawa Baleo local government, adding that any decision taken in violation of fair hearing is illegal. To our surprise, I now constituted a committee that came into Bauchi to investigate what happened. And we all know that once declaration is made, INEC 
is not empowered. It has no any legal backing to make a U-turn, to revisit any issue. After such declaration, it can only be so done by a court of law. The chairman further explained that the composition of the committee was also questionable, adding that the decision of ANEC based on the committee report was already prayed for at the Federal High Court Bauchi filed by the opposition. So we reject in totality the decision, the action of the INEC and the decision of the INEC in that respect. The party therefore demands for a return to status quo as at 11th March 2019. In Bauchi, Abbas Mekano, NTN News. Stay on the 2019 general elections, although Nigerians in the diaspora do not have voting rights from where they reside, many of them were involved in the 2019 elections. Some came in while others assisted in mobilizing Nigerians for the election from their locations. Some of them have been sharing their experiences with foreign desk correspondent Makut Simon Macham. Uh, elected uh, officials would be that they are transparent and then they are accountable for the offices they've been elected to. And uh, we all understand that democracy, it's, you know, um, for them to actually make sure that the dividends of democracy reaches the people that they are representing. We also hope that our elected uh, officials would uh, make sure that we have constant electricity. I was able to meet other African countries and Nigerians, and we were able to discuss, we were able to rob mine, and after we were able to tell them what is really on ground. Nigeria, what we need is technology transfer. We have everything, we are endowed with everything that we need. If our people there, are ready to calm down, and I was able to discuss with few of them, over 90% of them, aside doing one or two things in the country. There's a lot of movement and traffic yeah. between the time uh, before the election period. A lot of them came back to participate. So even without them having the chance to do that abroad, those that were able to contributed by coming back to mobilize their families, their friends, support for this administration. So we are glad, you know, that um, our Nigerians abroad see the progress that we're making and we're glad that they've contributed to the re-election of President Buhari. Information and Cultural Minister Lai Mohammed has urged the people of Kwara State to forge a common front in supporting the just elected governor of the state when he assumes duty. This, the minister said, is necessary to enable him to remain focused and govern the state with the promises made as the focus of his administration. The minister said this at an APC family get-together in Ilori, the Kwara State capital, and to enforcing reports. In attendance at the meeting were party leaders, stakeholders, and a cross-section of sons and daughters of Kwara who have come from far and near to contribute to the auto gear movement, which has brought victory to the party. Just as they celebrate their liberation for maladministration and bad governance. Taking turns to make observations, contributions, or outright expectations from the governor elect, the people were quick to remind the governor elect not to dampen the morale of the people by reneging on his campaign promises, but should carry the people along and make their welfare his priority. It is against this background that the minister called for caution in expectations. Be patient with us. It's easier to destroy than to build. We would be mindful of our responsibility towards the people of Kuala Street. We appreciate the huge mandate we give in us. I will live up to expectations. He said the victory they celebrate today is as a result of a collective sacrifice made by all. The governor-elect, who took note of all observations, comments and expectations, assured that their mandate will not be denied them as his administration will start from the scratch. This little boy, who caught the minister's attention, had also come with a request. 
asking the incoming governor to pay attention to education and health. In Ilori, the Kwara State Capital, and to other news now, and it's on a sad note that Garrison Commander 33 Artillery Brigade Colonel Mohammed Barak has been killed along Joss Bauchi Road. Army Public Relations Officer of the Command, Major Yahaya Nasir Kabara, who confirmed the incident, said investigation is ongoing. We now join Michael in Lagos for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Michael. Hello, Runke, and welcome to Lagos. The federal government has reiterated its commitment to ensuring that the Lagos Ibadan Railway Service on the standard gauge rail will be realized before the peak of the rainy season. The Minister of Transportation, Ruti Miyarmichi, gave the assurance after the monthly inspection of the project, Tunde Saiki reports. Following the successful completion of the Juabe Kuta station of the Lagos Ibando 156km standard gate rail project, work has reached advanced stages at the Abe Kuta Ibadan end of the project. With this progress, the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, has advised the firm handling the project, the China Civil Engineering Construction Company, to expedite action on the pace, particularly the table works ahead of the rains. We would have finished track lane. You could be able to take a train from Lagos to Ibadan. But you see, you will not be having stations, you will not be having communication equipment. Then they would, they would have continued the construction of uh, stations. You saw the Butemeta station. Here is the Ibadan station that they are trying to start construction and all that. We hope that before the rain starts, all that will commence. The minister revealed that the project was stalled for a short while because of the rocky nature of the terrain, which he said has been leveled up. I think we've done close to between 60 and 70 percent of the job. Uh, what would likely slow us down is not the, it's not the, it's not the tracks and the train, it's the communication and the stations. And they've commenced in some areas to construct stations. Uh, I've not heard anything about the communication. So if you are running just one train, then you can actually run from Lagos to Ibadan without any trouble. But if you're going to run more than one train, then you need the communication equipment. It will be recalled that the maiden train ride from Iju in Lagos State to Abeokuta in Ogun State was flagged off last month by the minister in Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. The federal government has launched an app known as report.gov.ng to promote transparency and good corporate governance in Nigeria's business community. Abola de Salami reports that the regulatory conversation 3.0 is aimed at harmonizing a viable business environment. The app, report.gov.ng, is a platform designed to easily resolve challenges most Nigerians face when dealing with ministries, departments, and agencies of the federal government. Minister of Industry, Trade, and Investment, Okechiku Enelema, reassured business operators and other stakeholders of government's resolve to improve on its set objectives of creating a robust business climate. And when we look at this app, it's a very tangible attempt to go to um, create another avenue for engagement. So unless there was an app through which can speak back to the government or to the agencies or to the service providers to say, here is my experience, how can you help? So we want to continue strategically communicating with Nigerian business sector in particular. We want this year to be a very productive one. People tend to assume that election years are going to be dull. And I don't think that has to follow at all. So the economy is up and going. Stakeholders suggest the adoption of a reform by the federal government that will focus on automating its processes and services with a view to promoting transparency. Uh, I think it's a very uh, welcome uh, development. And it's also very timely uh, as well, uh, because um, there are many challenges uh, that industries are facing um, doing business in Nigeria. Public enlightenment. Surprisingly, we have always had you know, public forums with our stakeholders, with all the stakeholders. We just keep talking, because the problem Nigeria has is that of integrity, that of compliance. With the app in operation, the irregularities often experienced by Nigerians as a result of poor service delivery, their grade will be addressed. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. The Federal High Court sitting in Lagos is yet to hear an application by the defense 
OG needs to direct the prosecution to supply it with summary of witnesses' evidence it intends to lead in the trial of the Nigerian Bar Association President Paul Usoro. Defense counsel Ife Dayo Adedipe informed the court that the application which is in line with the criminal practice direction has been made since the 15th of March. Vera Chimuba reports that the trial of the former governor of Ekita State, Ayodele Faoshi, also continued at the court. When the case came up for hearing, the EFCC counsel wrote to me Oyedakbo, informed the court that he was ready for trial as later and his witness in court. Counseled Osoro Ifedayo Adedipe drew the attention of the court to the pending application. The EFCC prosecutor told the court that he has not seen the motion which was served only on Friday. He, however, urged the court to proceed with the trial as that should not stall it. Another defense counsel, Mike Uzokome, informed the court of a pending application seeking to vacate the bench warrant. Counsel to Governor of Akwaibom Safe Charles Mekume also informed the court of a preliminary objection challenging the jurisdiction of the court to entertain the suit. EFCC had preferred a 10 count charge against NBA President Osoro. Akwaibom State Governor Emmanuel Odom, State Commissioner for Finance, Accountant General, and Margaret Ube are also named in the charge. The Federal High Court also admitted in evidence a statement made by late Justin Iruka, former personal assistant to former Minister of State Defense, Musli Obanikuru, in the trial of former Governor of Ikiti State, Ayo Fayoshi. Justice Mwajishala Olateregu held that the statement was admissible in law. Further hearing continues tomorrow. In Lagos, Vieira, Chumba, NTA News. That is it from this end. We return to Ronke in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Michael. And now to some judicial matters. Troya has commenced in the alleged forced declaration of assets by the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoge, at the Code of Conduct Tribunal that follows the appearance of Justice Onoge to answer to the count charge preferred against him. The prosecution counsel, Aliyu Omar San, turned at Code of Conduct Bureau forms and five other documents before the tribunal, seeking to prove that Justice Anogan tried to conceal the existence of five domiciliary accounts with the Standard Chartered Bank, but only declared his two accounts with Union Bank. The first prosecution witness, James Apala, also made presentations before the tribunal. The defense counsel, led by Adigbo Yega Woman Lausanne, objected to admissibility of Onoge's Code of Conduct forms of 2014 and 2016, alleging that they had been tampered with. The defense also alleged that the prosecution had made advanced arrangement of the court processes on the 10th of January 2019 to charge Onoge well ahead of the commencement of investigations. The case has been adjourned till the 21st of March. 2019. Meanwhile, offices of the Temple of Justice are again tasked to continuously strive to enhance easy access to justice. Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Tanko Muhammad, made the plea at the commencement of a national workshop for judicial officers administering justice at the lower courts in Abuja. Delia Tumbi was there. Seated air are judges from area, sharia and customary courts across the country. And the number one judicial officer, the acting chief justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanku Muhammad, is using the opportunity of having this category of judges to reiterate the important role their courts play in the administration of both civil and criminal justice in the country. Justice Muhammad reminded them that the constitutional role of the judiciary as an arbiter should be guided jealously and pointed out that actions and inactions of judges must always be in consonance with the code of conduct for judicial officers. He urged judicial officers to ensure the protection of human rights by finding and giving expression to the basic rights and freedom to which all human beings are entitled. Democracy insists on the respect for the rule of law. Its principles also advocate the independence of the judiciary. 
The doctrine of separation of powers, guarantee of fundamental rights, freedom of expression, epitomized by free press and media, as well as free and fair elections. The administrator of National Judicial Institute, Justice Rosalind Bozimo, said the conference will have made judges at the lower courts the opportunity to cross fertilize ideas in different areas of law. To this end, the speedy and expeditious resolution of cases before your courts is highly encouraged. The convergence of judges from area, sharia, and customary courts is to improve dispensation of justice at the trial courts. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi. NTA News. You are still watching NTA Nationwide. Ogochukuka in Bini has an update on Lassa fever treatment in Irua Specialist Teaching Hospital. Hello, Ogochukuka, it's silver to you. Irunke, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. About 35 patients are receiving treatment for Lassa fever infection at the Irua Specialist Teaching Hospital in Edo State, but the authorities say the latest outbreak has a declining infection rate. Agatha Ebarujo reports. There are indications that relevant government agencies are winning the battle against the spread of Lassa fever, a seasonal infectious disease common between the months of November to April. Although there are still cases of infection, but it is not widespread as authorities in the Irwa Specialist Teaching Hospital Lassa Fever Control Center say, compared to last year when 100 casualties were recorded, about 30 victims are receiving treatment brought in from Edo, Ebonyi, and Ondo states, with only five deaths recorded since the outbreak last year. Noting that report of death of medical personnel is false. When there is this fever that is not responding to your common anti-malarias and your antibiotics, physicians are advised, people are advised to then go for further testing to see whether it's Lassa fever virus. Now, like we know, there are many centers in the country now where the Lassa fever um, test can be done. And um, I think any of the centers can do the test and then appropriate treatment can take up from there. The director of the center, Ephraim Ogbani, is emphatic that the rigorous awareness campaign and the federal government's prompt response through the Nigerian Center for Disease Control is paying off. In Irwa Specialist Teaching Hospital, Irwa, Agatha Egwareuju, NTA News. 54 Libyan returnees in Edo State have benefited from the federal government's livelihood and empowerment programs organized by the National Commission for Refugees and Internally Displaced Persons. Bukola Rubusi has details. At the end of the training, certificate of participation, stipend, and starter packs were given to each of them. The assistant director of the commission, planning, research, and documentation, Ali Garuba, explained that the federal government has the responsibility of ensuring that their livelihood is restored. These are people that require the support of government when they came back from uh, 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 Libya. So part of that durable solution is to assist them with skills and the way with that, that is startup work and little money to start the businesses so that at the end of the day, they will be able to fully reintegrate back into their society. The head of ICT Refugees Commission, Shafiu Abubakar, Migration Research Expert, A. Anabe, and the Training Supervisor, Lorenta Omomia, charged the returnees to believe in their ability and the country, saying development is a gradual process. With little or no that can help you with, please try to make use of it. Let us believe that we too can be employers of labor. They should be patient. They will make great exploits. Some of the returnees promised to make judicial use of the money and the working tools given to them. What they gave to us is enough for we to start. We will show a good example to others. 17 ladies were taken through catering services and 17 men were taught the art of barbing. In Benin, Bukola Urugusi, NTN News. You're on to Nationwide. We'll now take a break. When we return, more reports. Please stay. A new edition of TV Guide is out with special focus on the role of the media in election coverage. 
exclusive on the National Broadcasting Commission. It's mandate as the sole regulator of Nigerian media. Dr. Toma Daba Den and Ishak Modibokawu. Now, this edition also features the king of standard comedy in Nigeria, Ali Baba, MTA standards to be ready for election transmission after decades of abandonment. Find out from the DG transactional elections in our political space and evil wind that blows no good. DG, National Orientation Agency calls for you guy, your indispensable companion, X-rays the impact of social media on election yarding process as electorates present their expectations from incoming government. Meet some TV professionals behind the screen and other inspiring stories in sports, entertainment and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or NTA stations nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. We are glad you are still staying with us. Minister of Education Malam Adamu Adamu says the continued attitude by state governments deliberately refusing to provide in counterpart funding for basic education, if not stopped, the federal government will have no other option than to use its strategy of deducting the money from source. The minister said this at a media briefing on the efforts of the present administration to provide in a total matching grant of 350 billion Naira to fund basic education in the country as against the 92 billion Naira provided over six years by the previous administration. Abdullah Musa Suleja reports that Malam Adamo also noted that corruption and lack of political will, among other reasons, have been responsible for most states' inability to provide in their counterpart fund to enable them access the matching grant provided by the federal government for universal basic education. President Muhammad Buhari uh, provided a total grant of 350 billion to basic education in the country. As we said, this is conditional. Unless states pay their own counterpart funding, they don't get anything. The government decided now, or from now on, to be deducting it from source, so that states do not suffer as a result of the mistakes of their government. The minister said the grant is for procurement and supply of textbooks in various subjects, construction of classrooms, provision of library resources, and training of teachers. It is an established fact that infrastructure is one of the bases for social and economic development, but sometimes lack of planning makes it difficult to support such development. An instance that typifies this is in Garin Tanko village along Kaduna Abuja Expressway, where 32 years after, children there denied going to school. There is, however, hope to right this wrong, and the community is responding with enthusiasm. Usman Aliyu reports of one infrastructure that seems to cater for their plight. When this road was dualized in 1987, people here in Garin Tanko. A community between Niger and Kaduna states had great expectations. Their joy gradually turned to sorrow as the busy road has been causing them dearly. The absence of safe turns, pedestrian bridge means a daily unfair race between man and machine. The result of which children of Karin Tanko have to make a choice between life and education as frequent accidents continue to claim their lives. Now the road is undergoing reconstruction and the government understands the dilemma of the people here. The government understands the dilemma of the people here. Ba yara ba so asamu uchi wa dole ya zuma karanta wa ansu nde ba so manyanta ba. We have a couple of pedestrian bridges and we are even considering the possibility of having interchange. We have vehicles can conveniently move and face various directions along the road corridor. Definitely it should last nothing less than 20 years with the way it's been constructed. 
Now we are since uh, approximately seven months on ground. We are walking in three sections. For transporters, this road is one of the major arteries linking Nigeria for commercial activities and social integration. So unarguably, this road is very important. And so for that, President Muhammad Buhari considered it among critical road projects to benefit from the Infrastructure Development Fund of $650 million, equivalent to 198 billion naira. Other failed sections of 45 kilometers along Abuja Lokoja Road could not be delivered 12 years ago. But now the government is fixing it in less than a year. Quite a bridge. On the surface, it's all fine. But in reality, many lives could have gone under it last rainy season. It was washed out by flood. But the timely intervention by federal government rescued it and provided a permanent solution. A herder, Halilusani, who lives around the area, wonders how the bridge survived the complacency. It is such interventions and proper planning for infrastructure development by the Buhari government, experts say, will lead to realization of the quest for limitless national development. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTA News. With agriculture becoming a major source of non oil revenue for the federal government, the Food and Agriculture Organization has stressed the need for rural farmers to be equipped with modern techniques in agribusiness. It is in the light of this that the UN agency, in collaboration with Kaduna State Government, commenced training of farmers on farm records, cash flows, book records, among other business in agriculture. Musa Babaliu has the details. In spite of the fact that Nigerian farmers are contributing largely to the socioeconomic well-being of the country, financial illiteracy, absence of adequate records and statistics of area under cultivation and output, remain major challenges. These agricultural economists say are contributing factors to farmers' inability to assess financial support from government and commercial institutions. If somebody wants to sign a one-year, a two-year contract for the supply of vegetables or other farm produce, he needs to be sure that best practices are, are, are enshrined in the production as well as be sure that there are, there are, there are, there are uh, the farmers have the capacity to meet uh, his requirement in terms of quantities uh, and standards. It is in the light of this that these farmers are undergoing training organized by FAO with a view to addressing financial illiteracy among farmers in Kaduna State. This is very important for any agri-enterprise. You need to keep a record so that uh, you are sure of the viability of your farm or your enterprise, you'll be able to remember what quantity of fertilizers you have you know, put in a particular area, what type of crop uh, uh, seed variety you have planted, the date you have done those planting. If you are keeping, you are going to harvest, you also keep record of those activities. This is the second time FAO and Kaduna State Government are organizing training for vegetable farmers in Kaduna State with a view to boosting crop production and exports in the country. From Kaduna, Musababa Aliyu, NTA News. And stay in line with the federal government's diversification to non art sectors, the Federal Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment has organized a workshop for cashew farmers in Ayingba, Kogi State, to leverage on the new direction of the federal government. Ayo Delig Big Bemi reports that the Federal Produce Inspection Service and agency in the ministry convened the one day workshop. The workshop with the team Cashew Nuts Quality Control and Regulations have in attendance cashew farmers, licensed buyer agents, processors, government agencies, and other stakeholders from within and outside the state. The coordinator of the program, Mr. Dafank Idris Sule, said the workshop is aimed at enhancing the quality of cashew nuts exported from Nigeria, putting into consideration the numerous value of the commodity and its large demand in the international market. We have had rejections in the international market. Last year there was glut of cashew in the international market. And it was occasioned partly by you know, uh, 
bad quality. Government needed to step in to ensure that our own is also very competitive quality-wise, so that when we get there, the best will not carry the day. The Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Sondi Akma, represented by Gata Liman Idris, a Deputy Director in the Ministry, said the workshop is in line with the Ministry's statutory mandate of enhancing competitiveness in Nigeria agri-commodities for both domestic and international markets by adhering to the quality standard. He added that the available data from the foreign trade report of the National Bureau of Statistics shows that Nigerian total export for the third quarter of 2018 was $4.835.6 A technical session on the techniques needed to improve cashew quality was anchored by Adams Momo. Let's take some trending stories from Kaduna Zone from Suleiman. Hello, Suleiman. It's over to you. And a warm welcome to Kaduna. A meeting between the Commissioner of Police, Kaduna State, Ahmad Abdurrahman, and critical stakeholders from Sangha local government area is in progress in Kaduna. Among stakeholders are traditional rulers, religious, and youth leaders from the area. Charlie Maxwell reports that the meeting, which is behind closed door, is to find lasting solutions to the killings in Sangha. Details are expected at the end of the meeting. Fallouts of the 2019 elections have made major headlines on both electronic print and social media. The news was everywhere as it happens. But who are those behind making of the headlines and how do they go about gathering and disseminating the news? Abdullah Muhammad has the details. Members of the Ford Estate of the Rem remain one of the most influential in the delivery of free, fair and credible elections following the planning and execution of elections, providing detailed information to the public, sometimes at odd hours and in uncomfortable places to be the first to get the information for the benefit of all. But the journalist remains committed. We're a bridge between the government and the government and the government needs to get the accurate information needed concerning what we decide the leadership of their future is it worth it yes it is it's just one of the sacrifices as a professional journalist to to pay and i'm doing it passionately because i'm trained to do this and this is an opportunity to be part of history so it's the passion for this job that's pushing me to be here and to make sure i render excellent service we break the news so we are here we are ready this profession may be tasking, but those who have found themselves in it always put a smile on their faces when their stories make the difference. In Kaduna, Abdullah Mohammed, NT News. Ginger farmers in the country will now have reasons to smile, as the Uncle Borrowers program of the federal government is set to give the necessary support to boost ginger production and exports. Rukaya Umar Farouk has the details. Ginger is one plant that is widely grown in Nigeria. In fact, Nigeria is one of the top producers of ginger in the world with its God-given vast and fertile land. The plant has huge potentials of exports that can boost the nation's economy when improved upon. But this has been hindered by some challenges the ginger growers in Nigeria are facing. It is against this setback that the ginger growers came together at a forum in Kaduna to reorient and sensitize themselves on ways of adding value to ginger cultivation and processing so that they can compete favorably in the international market. We are entering into Ankobua, CBN Ankobua program. We will now be able to know what is the cost of production per hectare so that there won't be any misguiding. In line with the federal government's agenda of diversifying the agri sector, ginger farmers will now have an added advantage of getting more land and funding to cultivate more hectares, get value return for their produce, and uptakers will get the necessary assistance from the input suppliers. Nigeria have actually done well in crops production, but when it comes to value addition, we are far, 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 far away. Ginger grown in Nigeria has been certified as the best and can virtually be grown in all parts of the country. In Kaduna, Rebeyo Umar Farouk, NTA News. That's our contribution from Kaduna. Kemi in our Ibadan Network Center is standing by for more reports. Kemi, 
It's over to you. Layman and a warm welcome to Ibadan. Oyo State Government is intensifying efforts to unravel the course of the collapsed building at Shogoye in Ibadan. Larry Bile was at the University College Hospital Ibadan to get a first-hand experience of one of the victims. I'm here at the University College Hospital UCH Ibadan where one of the victims is receiving treatment. Although investigation is ongoing on the collapsed building, but Ismail is one of the victims and he wants to tell us a few bits. Although he's in pain, he wants to use the opportunity to tell us what really happened. I was helping out to carry some blocks when there was a loud noise and the building collapsed on us. I was on bended knees for seven hours before I was eventually pulled out of the rubble. Well, Ismail, you just heard it from him. He has just narrated his story, the way it occurred. We are also fortunate to meet with the officials of his local government, that is the local government he came from, and this is what they have to say when we interview them. The local government is ready to help and to assist in terms of the medical bill. One of them went Dama. By Dama, I meant discharged against medical advice. So if he chose to discharge himself, the hospital would not take responsibility for that. But the one on ground, we are adequately taking care of him. There you have it from the PRO, and there's nothing more to add. It's back to the studios. As a way of ensuring successful fight against corruption campaign of the present administration, members of Baron Bench from Oyo, Ogun, and Lagos State gathered in Ibadan to brainstorm on how to strengthen the existing legislations to address incidences of delayed criminal trials. Correspondent Abdurraf Kamardin reports. The workshop brought to bear challenges the criminal justice system was faced with in the past and the reliefs contained in the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 to promote effective and speedy dispensation of justice. The Constitution expects closure of criminal trials within a certain period. It spells it out, three months. Various states that have domesticated the act also added some variations to make the laws more effective. Once there is an appeal, you come before the trial court, you say you want to stay proceedings in criminal, so in, in criminal trials, you can't obtain any stay of proceedings. So we find that we have a serious problem of prison decongestion, for instance. One way of um, attending to that now is this issue of plea bargain, which has really helped. It's only in the state that we have a provision where there's a time limit within which the legal advice must be issued by the Attorney General. We have 90 days. Participants call for more of such training to further deepen their knowledge on the application of administration of criminal justice acts for speedy criminal trials. From Ibadan, Abraham Kamaldin in T News. And as the electorate focuses attention on 2023 general elections, the need to appraise the conduct of 2019 general elections for better security arrangements has been stressed. In this report, correspondent Rafiat Anima Shambadmas takes a look at security challenges encountered during the 2019 general elections and the way forward. Nigeria has experienced six national multi-party elections in 2003, 2007, 2011, 2015 and 2019. Security experts say breaches of security during election, which often include snatching of ballot boxes, posing threats to electorates, vote buying and selling, and collaboration with political parties are threats to elections, which should be addressed in due course. To the youth, this is time for us to discover ourselves. We should not allow ourselves to be used as instrument of the anti-social. Some members of the public advocate for solidarity among the security agencies and government provision of additional logistics during elections. It was so peaceful. We had it very nice and everything went well. The Constitution has given him power to secure the people and secure the nation. They should do the needful. They know what to do. It is hopeful that post-election reports from all the security outfits would address security challenges in the subsequent elections. In 
Ibadan. Rofia Animashan Badmos, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Ibadan. Nationwide continues after this timeout. Stay with us. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first, get it fresh. Welcome to the last lap of the bulletin. Members of Abuja Moms Empowerment Foundation have encouraged parents and guardians to stand up against crimes concerning children and all forms of gender-based violence. They made this position known during a walk against child molestation organized by the foundation in Abuja to commemorate this year's International Women's Day. Miriam Emeka Amadi has the rest of the story. This seven-year-old girl was sexually molested at age five. Her experience buttresses UNICEF 2015 report that one in every four girls and one in every ten boys have experienced sexual molestation before the age of 18. To curb this menace, Abuja Moms Empowerment Foundation this awareness work is sensitizing Abuja residents to rise above this increase in ills. At least my daughter can see now that ever she will not have voice again. It's not all boys that are wicked. Yeah. And that, there's, that there are people to fight for her if any boys molest her or do anything bad for her again. So a lot of people don't want to talk about it because of fear for um, the child being stigmatized, you know, but that's why we're here, to tell women and men, uh, parents, that it's okay to let the child get closure. Some of us have not healed. I was molested at age 10, and I mean, I, I, I didn't get closure until I spoke about it on the platform, Abuja Moms. It's really sad when you see children, Underage children, three year old, especially the case of the 45 year old man that raped the girl with the Down syndrome. My heart bled when I saw it. And that is why we're all here today to, you know, like lend our voice and cry out as mothers that this menace has to stop. There seems to be no uh, deliberate attempt to stop it. Either people are not very much aware or the people that are aware seem to have folded their arms and are doing nothing. So this work is, is a sensitization. The work started at the Unity Fountain through Meitama, Wisetu, Central Area, and terminated at the takeoff point. No! Abuja Moms is a women's support group with the passion of seeing women succeed in all their endeavors. Miriam Emekamadi, NTA News. Time now for sports with Kene Emma Abudike.